proudest day, and the proudest time, and the seat of a rally here, because that day, and that hour, and those minutes, I got the butt between my teeth. You know, I really stood up and was counted and said, this is not getting away. I remember when we pulled on our helmets, and, and, and Donald says to me, what are we doing? I said, we're going for gold, Barrett. That's all we said. I can still picture that run. That was just the best, best run ever. Welcome along to Crunching Gears, the Rally Podcast, Season 3, Episode 42. And before we start, please like, share, rate, and if you can drop us either a five-star review or a wee comment, all those things make a huge difference. So, Connor, we're going to talk rallying once again, and we're going to talk uh, Cork 20, and also the Clare Forest this weekend, the final round of the Tarmac Championship, and <laughs> you have to feel for the, the club, you know, behind this. Put a huge effort in, fantastic entry, and I don't know, <laughs> they've either kicked a black cat or cracked a mirror or something, but... <laughs> They were so unlucky with the weather, like cracking day on Saturday for the Reiki, and then I seen photos from Monday as well, a beautiful day, and it wasn't like in time to rain on, on the Sunday, like there was, uh, was it a, a orange weather warning? Ah, it was just so unfortunate, I mean, like we were hyped up about the event coming up, like, and the, as you say, cracking entry, great stages. Oh, everything was just looking good and the weather up to it had been up fantastic and, and just started the blue just torrential yeah. weather and you know unfortunately it had to be halted after um what do you call it during stage six yeah and like and that's not taking nothing away from the event like you know the guys like um uh, you know callum and keith uh, or you know and even matt too matt lost i think about nine seconds ten seconds on the first stage and he was still only that behind after the you know stage five they were matching each other, to, you know, within a second of each other over the, the, the stages, and in those conditions, I, I, I just it warps my head even trying to think about it. How they can drive a stage, never mind in the dry, but in the absolutely torrential rain, and still be within a like a tenth or you know even two seconds of each other at that. That's it. Like, you know, they were still trying. Like, there was a lot on the line. You know, there was obviously the overall win, but there was also Nairis Tarmac. Rally Championship had to be sorted out yeah. and nobody was backing off either. And, um, you know, full commitment there. And, you know, watch some of the onboards. It's just incredible. And when you look at the amount of spray and water coming up and, you know, there's a few clips then of, of spins and near misses as well. Like, mm -hmm. you know, really was tough conditions. Yeah. And, like you know, you have to take your tip your hat to, to Callum and, you know, fantastic drive once again. Another one under his belt now. He's rigging up the ones. He's racking up the wins. And again, you know, look, we've said it and we probably over-egged it, you know, coming into Cork. Brand new car. Yeah. You know, and this was his first real test of the car in wet, wet conditions. Mm -hmm. And uh, like, Skoda didn't disappoint. Callum didn't disappoint. Yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. And, you know, Keith then, that, that's title number two now in the Tarmac Championship as well, too. Uh, very controlled drive, you know, like, had he more in the locker? We'll never know, you know. But like, um, you know, as, you can argue he has, he has a title now home with him. That's it. Look, fantastic job done. You know, needed to finish second. He finished second. He didn't, you know, get get lose the head and in those conditions get into a fight with Callum. Although he wasn't far off Callum either, but um, control drive um, kept it as clean and as neat as he could in those conditions. And yeah, like solid, solid performance from himself and Mikey. That's for sure. Then yeah, and then you know, and then taking third, then uh, was uh, Matt Edwards and Dave Monaghan. You know, third, uh, third overall and third in the championship as well. And like I speak to him, you'll hear from that later on too. You know, more than happy with his years rallying too and all. So you know, if you never you consider like, probably most of the events that was his first time visiting them. It, it has to be happy with what he achieved, really. Yeah, look, a really, really solid performance from from Matt and Dave. And you know, again. The Fiesta, the, the the evolution version of it. Again, you know, we knew the car was tweaked and ready to go this year, and we saw some solid results. But really, you know, Matt has shown what that car can do, and and had a really strong performance in in the tarmac rounds in it. That's for sure. That's for sure. Yeah. And then in the modified, you know, like we also speak to Frank and Lauren Kelly. Like Frank went there, and I suppose the the aim of the game was to one. You know, get maximum points in the, the you know the, of the modified guys there. Not only did he do that, he won the two wheel drive overall. And like 
you know, I talked about these guys earlier, like the the speeds they were doing. Like the two wheel drive, imagine trying to handle the two point five car in those conditions. That it must have been scary at times. Oh look, I can't even imagine. And and you know, I think you know there was probably expectations and Frank to be as usual flamboyant self. Yeah. And in between the weather and you know title on the line i would say he probably was a bit more controlled than normal <laughs> but you know again look what he can do like yeah. absolutely incredible drive himself and damien toner had a hell of a fight yeah for sure yeah and like unfortunately damien had then had issues with the the one that's steaming up and one thing and another but you know <laughs> as frank will allude to he had his own issues with one that's steaming up and all too and like what the story that is and i'm really looking forward to seeing the vlog with it and, and then Daniel McKenna had a fantastic run then too. Like, I think he's only ended up less than two seconds behind and Frank as well too. Like, for Daniel only getting out a few times in the year, he can just seem to turn on the pace. And you know, we all know he's talent. There's you know, there's no <laughs> there's no hiding from it. Oh no, there isn't. Like, like Daniel's a talented guy, as you say. We're all well aware of it. Um, what do you call it? It was great to see him come back to rally and took him a few rallies to get up to speed. But as you say. You know, once he gets back in behind the wheel now, like there's no holding him back. Yeah, and then Connor Murphy as well too. You know, Co Connor is an undoubted talent. He's just, I don't know, another guy. I think he has kicked the black cat or something. He is like, cursed with black luck as well too. But whenever he's out, like, he shows great speed everywhere as well too. So, yeah, um, <laughs> we probably shouldn't even be saying this, but I'm really looking forward to 2025 already because like 24 has been an absolutely cracking season. It has. It's been a fantastic Tarmac Championship this year. Really, it's been so enjoyable to follow. Some fantastic fights and battles at the front. And I just hope that everybody that we've seen out this year is there on the start line of Galway come February. Yeah, wouldn't it be cracking? Because, like, you know, you know, the variety of cars, the different winners, you know, nobody has went away and hid with the title this year. You know, yeah. every class, every, every, you know, every round, it's just been, like, intense and it's been absolutely fantastic to watch. Yeah, it has. Look, it, it, it's nearly like the championship of old and it was great. And, you know, as I say, hopefully for next year, we get it down to the wire again as well. And it goes to the last round. That's for sure. That's for sure. But anyway, no point in us telling you anything more about it. Let's hear, first of all, from Frank and Lauren Kelly, and then that will roll into Matt Edwards. 2024 Modified Champions. Nice ring to it, Frank. Sounds good. <laughs> it's not something I thought we'd be hearing, to be honest. Um... I listen, it, it's one of them things we set out innocently to go with at the beginning of the year, not expecting much. Got talked into sign up for the uh, championship for the first time in 10 years. 2014 was the last time I assaulted a championship and I sort of stepped away from that. Uh, grew old disgracefully in one thing or another, but uh, we, went to, we went to Galway and Sean Hay talked me into doing the championship. He's a new registrar this year. Um, Galway went amazingly well. I was chatting to you after that, and uh, mm -hmm. I'd never been to Galway before in February. Who would go to Galway in February? Uh, <laughs> but it was a great rally and, and won the national and uh, got top points. So, sort of worked from there. But then went downhill in West Cork, where we should have went well. Uh, leading into the stage three in the night, and then gave her a right good slap. And she, you know, the story from there Circuit of Ireland didn't get it for it and going to pass my bloody door uh, with no engine. But uh, Donegal was good class. We had a real good run in Donegal, scored top points there. Um, Killarney was good class too. We know all the stories about the statute of limitations is not up yet, so we can't tell the whole story. About <laughs> um, be in the uh, Ulster now, Ulster was a tricky one because we had we knew we had a score. We knew with Damien, uh, we would never touch him there. Damien's a hard competitor and a hard driver. Like he, he, Damien's hard work anywhere. But in Ulster, I knew it was going to be very hard working. With my history with the UAC events, I just don't have any luck on them. It's usually carnage. So it was, we had a real good run through the first stage, to be fair. And I'd, I'd, I'd picked a different tyre than everybody else. It was like cool enough in the morning, worried about rain. And um, I thought to be bold and brash, put hards and mediums on. Um, he always just likes to do what everybody else isn't doing. <laughs> my, my rule of thumb is with tyres, do the opposite of everybody else. Uh, but it was the right call. I was the only man on the right tyre. And we were having a fierce run through the stage and it felt really good. I was really happy and I, with the push we were getting and I thought to myself, this is going well. And what, two miles from the end of it, a uh, blind right-hander, a bloody rock pulled out, uh, probably an R5 or something, clipped the bank, rock pulled out, I had a full stock front and back wheel. Front rim was damaged, back wheel went down. Uh, got us out of the stage, but it sort of screwed the rally for us. But 
we got back up to get second place points behind Damien and that was always the plan from that rally was if we can get second to Damien at least with someone to go to fight in Cork and Cork's more home than me than Ulster to be honest I've been down there for a lifetime being with you know having Liam Brennan on board I've been adopted down there and they've forgiven me for throwing him out because I know these like to listen to so uh, it's like a second home to me and I feel really comfortable in Cork uh, all down around there fantastic always great reception great rally mm-hmm. Cork 20 you know I yeah, read yeah. about it last year and I think I don't think anybody even with the conditions could uh, could say I was wrong you know a fantastic rally and it just went our way yeah because I was you know I was talking to Kevin O'Reardon last week the, the COC and he says it was word of mouth guys like yourself that you know went to the event last year went away singing the praises that's what brought people there this year and they were so unlucky with the weather because as you say Everybody was talking about, you know, on Saturday night, that how good the stages were. They were, you know, yeah. this was going to be a brilliant rally. It's just, you know, what was the weather going to do? And nobody yeah. can tr- control that. That's just it, unfortunate. It, it was so unfortunate because last year they got hit with weather as well. Uh, it was unsure if the rally was going to start last year because they were out from silly o'clock in the morning, uh, lifting trees off the road, lifting branches off the road to clear the stages. And there was the same in the morning. It was torrential rain. The wind would have lifted you. But thankfully, as the day went on, it cleared up. And I think Sunday was a pretty good day last year. It was nice and sunny. And it turned into a great rally. But just this year, and then we, like, it was so hard to believe on Saturday when we were wrecking because the sun was splitting the trees. It was gorgeous. And thought, you know what, they're just, you know, they have to put out these weather warnings and over-dramatise it to, mm-hmm. just to be safe. Well, by Frig, when we got up on <laughs> Sunday morning and nearly got the head took off us going out the hotel door, I was like, no, I don't think we were joking. It made tyre choice easy, to be fair. I didn't yeah. do that with yeah. everybody. <laughs> you done the same, the, the same as everybody else. I would say at least if it's going to rain, just rain the whole day, because there's nothing worse than this messed about of is it dry, is it wet, and him and Han and never being on the right tyre. Yeah. I, because like that, you know, that's not fair on anybody. That just it, it turns into a lottery. It's, you know, it takes the yeah. takes the skill out of the driving. Then doesn't it really? Because it, it's just you know, you can, for half a stage you can be on the right tire, and then it's dangerous yeah. for the last half of the stage. Things like that. At least if it's wet, it's wet, kind of thing. That's it. Look at the draw, and then sure, somebody who's ten cars behind you could get a bone dry, whereas you got a token. You know, it's just yeah. one of them, one of them things. But no, there was definitely no doubt about it. <laughs> it was definitely not going to dry on Sunday. Anyway, it was just. The way it went, it just got worse and worse as the day went on. Like usually, you think right, it'll calm down a bit, but gee, for so, are we? We had no service crew. It was just uh, ourselves down a cork, and we were worried that the tent was going to be halfway across the service area by the time we come back. <laughs> <laughs> and you haven't even rosemary there to, to tie it down or not? <laughs> no, nobody looked after it. We just tied as many ways to it as we could, and put weights on it, and just hope to God it was there when we come back. <laughs> And like Frank, you know, in them conditions, like we you know, we talk about how good a two point five escort is to drive. It must be horrible in conditions like that. It's uh, it keeps your attention. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. Um, to be fair, the Millington at the minute and Robbie Thorne at Track Day Performance maps my car and he makes it very drivable. Um, I don't have a wet map. Uh, I think they're starting to bring wet maps back in again because they used to at the very beginning have a, a wet and a dry map. And that the wet map took a bit of the aggression off them, but I don't. My car doesn't need it. It, it just feels, you know, you can control it. Uh, especially with a floor mounted paddle box, you have a big long throttle stroke. It's not a flick switch, uh, so it gives you a chance to control it. But it's very hard not to put it to the bulkhead all the time, you know, and, and <laughs> wait for it to get it up. But I don't know. The, the first stage went fierce well for us. We put a lot of work into the Iraqi. We worked very hard in the Iraqi. Uh, got up early, got signed on early, and, and went and did our thing and, and concentrated on. Where there was grip and where there was no grip, because as Lauren said, Saturday the sun was splitting the trees. It was a beautiful day, birds singing, blue skies, and you thought this cannot be right. But just in case it's right, just we'll work that it's going to be a really wet rally, uh, which it turned out to be. Obviously, a uh, fair bit of shiny stuff, hard to pick it up on a dry road. But we worked hard at that and and got where the breaking was and where there was no breaking and tried to get that in our notes to work with that. And that's great. That's handy enough. But Getting that into my noggin at 100 mile down the road is the biggest problem, but it worked well for us. It's just as the first stage went on, I realised where she, how she was working. Um, I went full gravel setup. To be honest, I, I just put her into full gravel settings in the morning. Uh, thinking right, we'll see because I've been working my own suspension long enough. I have dry tarmac, wet tarmac. 
gravel. I went straight to gravel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because the road, the roads did break up a wee bit in places, and there was quite a bit of farming, and I knew the R5s would cut a bit. Uh, not as bad as some rallies, but with the amount of rain that was falling, you know, the, the verges was sodden, and if you touched them at all, they exploded. Mm-hmm. Um, so we worked with that. Uh, I, I just couldn't get over our time in the first stage. I felt a good stage. I knew I'd left a bit of time in it, but I knew I'd drive on all right. And I thought, you know, if we're in five, six, seven seconds of the lads, I'll be happy. When I turned it quickest, when we walked the drive away from Kelly and Duffy, I says, Lauren, you, you double check. Do you, you, you get a flyer there? <laughs> and she says, well, you know, it's a second out. We were robbed of a second. <laughs> we were a second quicker than that. Uh, and I said, Jesus, <laughs> that's all right. We must have all had baller. You know, but, but they'll chastise us on stage two. And then with a good run through stage two, I backed off a bit towards the end of it. Damien was struggling. He had a misfire. He had steam and windscreen, which we all kind of had, but we had an alternative. <laughs> remedy for that uh, so uh, I, when I, I seen him in the distance uh, coming about two thirds of the way through and Killarney flashback came into my head thinking the hand on me and have had when I passed him yes. on the stage of Killarney and I thought I'm not passing him I'm staying the fuck away from him <laughs> this time I'm not going through a bridge so I, I, I stopped taking any risks and just uh, d- drove hard but didn't take any stupid risks because uh, I didn't want to get into a hand on so, and we still were quickest Mm-hmm. And I thought, Jesus, what is going on here? Am I in an alternative universe? Am I going to wake up in the hotel room thinking <laughs> we're going to do this thing? Well, the really, the really difficult it. thing about Cork was after Ulster going to Cork 20, we, we sat down for a long time. <laughs> I was like a mad scientist with all the calculations of championship points and stuff. We realised going to Cork that we had to win. Basically, yes. we, we had to win because even if we finished first and Damien finished second, that would have left it a complete tie overall. And it went to the first tiebreaker, which is whoever had the most wins, we were still equal. Whoever had the most second places, we were still equal. So it would have to go down to the second tiebreaker, which was whoever scored the highest points on their first scoring round, which would have left us champion. But like that, that is how tight I, 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 the mean, whole I, thing was. Be, uh, yeah. And to throw a spanner in the works, uh, Connor Murphy was doing Park 20, and he has just had a, the most unlucky season. He's registered, you see. Yeah, yes. he was a registered. He is the most had the most unlucky season, so he wasn't in championship contention, but he was still a registered competitor. He could still take points so, away from you. Exactly, yeah. he yes. could still take points of us. And like Connor is so hard to beat, he goes so well, and we just knew like, geez, not only Damien, but we're, we're going to have to finish ahead of Connor as well. Because if Connor finished first, we finished second, and Damien finished third, Damien would have won the championship. Okay. So yes. it it was it was. Tricky, you know, we'll say we put a lot of work in and just that's when we, when we got to the end of the stage, it was like, right, okay, we've beat Damien, but check Murphy's time. Aye. And to be quickest over, and like even McKenna and stuff, as, he, as, you, as I said on uh, Duffy's thing, it was like, we'll screenshot that. Because it'll never happen. <laughs> <laughs> screenshot that shit. Yeah. <laughs> There's life in the old dog, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the. It, but I suppose maybe that kind of conditions. It's not. It's the bravest. Maybe it's not. You know, the it's not the it's best car control. And maybe that's where I'm going with rather than. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I I I did think I was being quite brave in places, and we did get up in water a few times. But I've had bigger moments in the dry. To be honest, uh, you know, you just you feel her going like, and you know from the arse of your pants that you're not on the road anymore, and. The worst thing you can do is overreact. It just depends where the braking's at, whether you're in a braking zone or not, and then you're screwed. But any time it happened to us, it was high speed on fairly stiff parts of the road, but you realised you weren't connected to the road anymore. So just not reacting, just you know, steer away, but don't do anything with your feet is sort of my way of dealing with that. And it seemed to work with us. The, the three or four times it happened, we got away with it. I just come back, contacted the road again before the braking zone. Um, bit of luck, obviously. Uh, we needed that bit of luck. Um, Tire choice had worked really well, but everybody was on wet, so there was no big issues that way. But now the car worked really well. The gravel settings worked. Our notes were perfect. We just had a dream day. Uh, I was kind of sorry that they pulled the rally. I understood totally why they did, um, because the stage six, although it doesn't show in the rally, we did stage six. Me and Damien would have been the last two cars through stage six before they pulled the rally, and then the, the results were back to the stage five. It, it had got very bad now. The water was running down the road, and we were... You know, mm-hmm. in third gear and places where we would have been in sixth gear, 
yes. trying to keep her on the road and trying not to get bow waves pulling you off into the ditch. And maybe you do no big harm, but you're stuck there for the day and that's the whole thing over. So it was very hard to know. And I never drove over as many car parts in stage six in my life. There was R5 bumpers, spoilers, headlights, <laughs> side skirts. There was bits of R5s lying everywhere. I would say I did over about 10 grams worth of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the headlight was the worrying thing. There was a full headlight unit out of something. I don't know what Skoda or Fiesta or what it was. Full headlight unit. And all I could do was get it between the wheels. I didn't want to hit it with a wheel. Well, I did some racket out the back of my car. Yeah, you could just hear it bouncing up through the whole boat uh, of the car. The, the, the whole headlamp unit went and dung. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that, whoever. Callum Duffy, whoever. Uh, yeah. Or Mr. Uh, Devine, sorry. Uh, Mr. Uh, Martin Wilson or somebody would be rubbing their hands going, good man, keep her going. <laughs> as long as they don't get the bill for it before, yeah. But you, know, you could have picked up a puncture or anything. It, yeah. was, it, was, it was survival. It had got down to survival at that point. You know, mm. the... And you could loss a minute in a stage yeah. like that easy. You know, we'd built up a good cushion on everybody else. And Daniel was only two seconds behind us, but no harm, Daniel. I didn't give him one fuck about Daniel. <laughs> uh, he wasn't registered. I wasn't after, uh, you know, winning the modifieds there. I just had one plan yeah. and it was working at that point. Uh, I didn't want it taken away from me by anything stupid. No. And like that that's two tarmac uh, championships and the first for Lauren. Like you, you often talked about, you know, you want to have these days for Lauren. It must be nice then to be able to share a championship with her. I know you didn't want to get caught up in the whole thing, but, it, you know, at the end of the year, it's nice to have that wee bit of crystal and say, we've done this together. It, no, it's it all, was it's funny. It was funny because I think technically after the Ulster, mathematically, I had already wrapped up the, the Navigators Championship and... Uh, we were chatting about the prize given or something in booking rooms. He's like, What would you still go to that if, if I don't win it? I was like, I have my part done. <laughs> He's like, Oh, I just leave me, just leave me. <laughs> I haven't decided that I'm going to get her up. <laughs> you better. Thank you, mate. Yeah. It won't be the last one, so I might. <laughs> I will keep saying it's your last one, but you never know. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. Well, that was my first championship that I did since 2014. Yes. It only so, came about because like the likes of West Cork, Donegal and Cork 20, you were, were going to go to anyway. Uh-huh. And it's like, when you do that many, you may as well sign up and see what shakes out of it. <laughs> uh, and then the circuit was going to be close to home this year. And, you know, it was, yeah, yeah. It, it all kind of made sense, didn't it, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just, it's, that's like... It's hard to believe. Obviously, we started off really strong in Galway. Like that, that win was surprising and it was great, but then it all went downhill for a while. You know, when you have two non scores in a row, it's not looking very good, but it just goes to show it's never over till it's over. No. <laughs> and, like, you know, in fairness to the championship this year, they, you know, they have put a lot of effort into it, especially with the modified. In other years, sometimes, you know, sometimes the modified crews kind of feel as if they're almost an add on or forgotten about. There was a lot more promotion around it, and a lot, you know they, they were still grabbing the headlines as well. There was a lot of inclusion. To be fair, I think uh, you know when you get rally people running the championship, it's always a big help. Uh, but there was never any point where I thought we we're second class citizens. That's for yeah. sure. And you know my feeling: we are the stars. People come to watch us. The R fives or the rally twos are just making up the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the stages. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Clear out of the mess and get rid of the byways. They didn't make a great job of the court, but they just left carnage around the place. But it's uh, no, it's a good, it's a good championship. It's, it's tough going. Um, you know, they're nearly all multi day rallies, bar well, Cork was back to one day for obvious reasons. But you know, they're tough rallies. But as Lauren said, we were going to do most of them anyway. I hadn't been in Killarney since 2013. Um, it was as tough a rally as we've done. You know, it was very tough. Logistics were very tough. You know, it was a sort of a family team. It was hard to get things moved around and get from A to B. And, and Gary Fowler from Nemesis pulled us out there and did a great job to get you know get us to the right service area at the right times and do all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. So, um, interesting. It's, it's nice to go go to rallies you haven't done in a long time and just remember maybe why you haven't done them. <laughs> <laughs> I remember how tough it is. I had forgotten even how tough the, the recce was, Killarney. Yes, uh, the mm-hmm. Killarney Lakes is a tough rally to do. You know, it's a dunny all. It's a two day. <laughs> Going all, Aye, three it's, days, it's, going all two it's, days. It's three days crammed into two, yeah. nearly, you know. Yeah. So, uh, That's basically it. You're doing some hammer and about, I'll tell you. By <laughs> Saturday night, I was ready for bed, and Sunday morning, I was putting bite my finger. But <laughs> uh, it, it, it turned out to be a great rally, too, you know, savage weather and everything. And, and you know, it's nice to have done them things. And often, you know, I've been thinking since um, 
the circuit round my own road and not getting doing it. And I'm, I was checking myself and everybody else around me that I didn't get doing it. And now I'm thinking, well, I wonder if I had done it, what would have happened? You know, <laughs> would that have been it over? Or, you know, what would have happened? Because I could, you know me, I could have made a wild mess. Uh, so you just don't know. Things happen for a reason. Uh, In lots of cases, you know, you, you <laughs> never know when something Why, I, but I, there, there's a reason why you didn't do it. Yeah. How could they end up yeah. needing a roof skin and the whole lot of yeah. bits and pieces, you know? Could, so. You know, might not have got to Cork, Tony, you wouldn't know shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, the other thing is, then, the one-day rallies this year, like, you know, Cork and, you know, the Ulster, they were tough rallies as well, yeah, you know, like, unfortunately with the Valor and Cork, but the Ulster, like, for a one-day rally, that, that provided a real challenge. Uh, you know, it's not like a, just a national rally. That, they they pulled out a lot, of, put a lot of effort and pulled out a lot of stops to make it a, a real tough rally for you. It was a really good rally. There were tough stages. Both of us kind of prefer more fast-flowing stuff, and the Ulster was very tricky and technical, as they would say, but after our first pass in recce, we were exhausted, you know, like just, oh God, this is so tough. But then it rallied a whole lot better and the speed you could carry in the technical stuff. It was something different, a, a different challenge. And we, we actually, we were surprised how much we actually enjoyed ourselves ourselves on the Ulster. And we had a, a great day and good crack and good weather, you know, mostly made up for it as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the, a tough thing I thought in Ulster was the, that, I can't remember, stage three and four were like 150 or 200 yards apart. So you finished yeah. one and you went straight to the other. And even letting the trying to get the car cooled enough to start the next stage because you usually get out and get down the road and get a bit of air flowing through and cool the brakes, cool the engine, cool the gearbox, cool the driver, the whole lot, and uh, get the brain recharged. <laughs> but it was straight into the next one. Uh, and it, it was quite tough, I thought. Uh, you know, doing it that way, but it was the nature of the rally. Just. Yeah, and you know, and it wasn't just like a you know. If three stages service, you know, they mixed it up a wee bit as well too, because you went out and done two stages and service and then out and done mm-hmm. another two. And, you know, that, that I thought that kind of broke the day up a wee bit as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that uh, threw me off because I'm a man of routine. <laughs> 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 I want my yogurt now. Why am I not going to yogurt now? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta keep saying, go to the next stage, don't play for the service, go to the next stage. <laughs> so that's the championship done and dusted then. So. Is Baby Blue ready to get her water wings again and start travelling? Aye, right. she's in the process already. Gearbox and pieces, gearing being changed in one thing or another. Um, Rally Legends is back on the calendar. We've all kissed and made up. And yeah. we're heading back there this year. Um, and she'll be in a ferry, hopefully, this Saturday. Uh, so, thankfully, you know, I was genuinely fully prepared to bin her in Cork, win it or bin it. Uh, and thank God it didn't ha- that didn't happen. So, um, the blue paint can be set back in the shelf for Norway. Um, <laughs> so now getting the whole thing sorted out, we're heading Rally Legends and survived that three weeks, four weeks later, we're in Lusso. It's only in, two weeks after that, actually. Yeah, in Portugal. Uh, do their version of Rally Legends and it looks like we'll just agree to do Madeira and our three or four weeks after that. She'll not be home till December time, I would say. Excellent. Sometime. Uh-huh. And um, Lauren, like you know, you've been over now in uh, Rally Legends now. Uh, that's what three times, four times now, is it? This is actually our seventh time. Seventh time we've gone to Rally Legends. And you've done every one of me. Yeah. I have, yeah. yeah. Ho- ho- that's mad you know, now when you think about it. <laughs> you know, we see the pictures, we see the videos. Is it as special as all that? You know, with the the night stages. You know, the the crazy fans. Is it all that and more? That's what I would say. Like, even though this is our seventh time going to it, it never gets old. It just never gets old. It just puts a smile on your face every time you go. And every time you go, you think, no, it'll probably not be as good as the last time. And it just blows it out of the water. It just, especially since COVID, it's kind of, you know, building up again from that time, you know, when things were restricted and not as many crowds and et cetera, et cetera. So it feels like it's back till its former glory in a way. And just, there's nothing, it's so special getting into such a range of cars being in the middle of, you know, the Rally 1 cars that we have at the minute till your Group A stuff, your Group B stuff. It's so cool to be in the middle of so many eras of cars and just it's so nice at the end of the season to have no pressure and just go out, have fun, have the crack, blow off a bit of steam and have a laugh. Well, as we always do, like, but, <laughs> yeah, but uh, I bet you're not looking at the, you know, you're not worried about the clock, you're not looking at points, you're, you know, there's none of that, it's just go out and yeah. just out for a slide. Yeah, no, try, try and keep four corners. Paddy O'Brien got 12 gravel tires of him, 
so them rimmed up there at Modern Tires, so they're they're rimmed up. Uh, they'll probably not be enough, but it'll get us started. Get you started. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, as you said, then on to Portugal, and then hopefully Madeira after that. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. uh, uh, Portugal, you've been to before, but Madeira is new ground for you, then. Yeah? Uh, Portugal, the Lusso Rally is a, like a scaled down version of Rally Legends. Fantastic wee event. Uh, it's getting bigger and bigger. I think it's their seventh or eighth edition, they call it. Mm -hmm. um, great, great welcome there. The Portuguese are on belief. They're all mental, same as the Italians, you know, and they really enjoy and they're really, they're really very appreciative of, of us coming so far and, and getting there, but they look after us fierce well. And as, as I say, if we survived that, the Madeira thing has only really come about in the last couple of days and it's pretty much 100% uh, confirmed now. I just need to work out the logistics because it's the whole seed getting off the main Portuguese land out to Madeira. Uh, I probably should have realised this in Ireland. It's not part of the. <laughs> <laughs> but where there's a wall, there's a way. <laughs> where there's a ship, there's a way. <laughs> she could be sitting in a load of bananas or something. I don't know where she'll be. But we'll get her in there somewhere. And hopefully she's in the same shape coming back again. But you're listening. We've had a fantastic year when you look back on it, you know, yeah, a few blips earlier in the year. Uh, I got that bit out of you eventually. <laughs> well, I, I, 90% of that was brakes. <laughs> Once we got the brakes sorted, and the, you know, the, that was another thing in, in, in Cork. It was our, Waxford actually was our first time in full wet conditions and then you endless brake pads. And I was worried what to be like in the wet. Revelation, yeah. absolute revelation. And it, it carried on until uh, the Cork 20 and, you know, to not to, to, to be confident that she's not going to lock up and head down the road with locked a one or two locked wheels, uh, it just gives you so much confidence. You know, I I would you know after the weekend, oh, I kept thinking if we could find out what we did different <laughs> to work out how this happened, or is it just a freak thing because of the weather and me being a gravel man at heart? You know, what was it? But when you think about it, it was lots of wee things. Yeah. You know, it was, it was having a real good setup in the suspension, really good notes, and a lot of consternation in the recce for the, the wet and the, the brake and the non brake and the right tyres, and just the brakes worked fantastically. And the boss here just. Well, the two nuts in the car was a huge difference I, as well, too. Obviously. I just did what I was told for a change <laughs> and, and a squeegee. And a squeegee. <laughs> Steaming up was a fierce issue for everybody. There's more water in the car than there was outside the car. But uh, as you'll see in our vlog, when it comes out, there was a squeegee wiping across the screen down again in the middle of the stage. Oh, no. <laughs> Matt Edwards, we're at the finish now of the 2024 Tarmite Championship. Probably not what you hope for, but all in all, you, you have to take some positives from the year. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I mean, I've done some of the best stages I've ever done. Um, you know, I've always wanted to do Kalani, for sure. Um, Donegal again. <laughs> um I mean, even some of the, the stages on the circuit were, were fantastic, you know, really technical, nudgery stages. Um, and, yeah, OK, third in the championship. It's it's a success in some ways. First year, a lot, a lot of new mileage for me. Probably 75% of it was new, if not more. Um, so from that point of view, yeah, that's, that's been great. But obviously, me being me, wanted more. And, I mean, I, I felt really the pace that we'd shown all year probably deserved a bit more. but. Luck wasn't really on our side a lot of the time, and you know there was a few things out of my control as well. So, you know that's that's rallying. But you know we've we've got some knowledge now, and if we if we get the opportunity to go again, we go again. If we can make it happen, if it suits everybody, um, but yeah, it's um, it's been a privilege to be part of it. You know, seeing them played a huge part, probably played a huge part in you know that that's probably been in the pipeline a couple of years with the other work I've been doing. Um, but yeah, thanks to a lot of people. Thanks to Dave as well for for all his hard work and and you know perseverance. You know, both of us juggling work and doing the rallies to the best of our ability. It's it's not been easy, but um, yeah, it's it's something I I'd certainly no regrets. That's for sure. No, because like, you know we all say you know how like rallying is a sport of very fine margins, and like you know Galway, it was it, it was nothing. You know, you were only just maybe even six inches offline then uh, you know uh, just the car stepped out and uh, Ulster the same Donegal like, uh, you know and it, it, that is just it's it can be shit or bust and just in such uh, such small margins yeah that's that's the story of the year and you know even look at last weekend we there were stages we were only tenths 
tense between yeah. us when there was such huge variables in weather, road conditions, but we're all sort of seeing the same thing and driving the same way, mm-hmm. r- roughly. Um, some will take a risk somewhere, some some will back off somewhere else, but the end result is is fairly similar, whatever the weather it seems, you know, in different cars as well. And it's fairly amazing, really. Killian's always getting the getting excited about how close it is with so much driving going on. You know, it is amazing, really. Yeah, because I think after maybe like eight or nine uh, minutes of competitive driving, to be separated by tenths is like it is, yeah. it is ridiculous, really, if you think about it. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you think you've done all that driving, it's like, well, I've gained nothing. But I'm <laughs> yeah, I have felt that a few times. Yeah, because like, you, you know you probably are sticking your neck out, but then obviously Callum and Keith doing exactly the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's my <laughs> really. And the you know the Fiesta in fairness has been you know really reliable for you all year as well too. Uh, the Terra you had a, a wee issue with the pop off, but once that got sorted, you had a great run there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the car's been you know we've not had any major mechanical faults or failures. There's been little things. Um, I'd say bugging me a little bit here and there, um, but that's partially probably down to the fact that we've used several different cars. Okay. Um, had we stuck with the same car all year, that may or, not have, or may not have happened because obviously the pressure on M Sport to get three or four cars to us has been quite high. So whether that's resulted in some of the minor problems. Um, and those minor problems only manifest themselves because of those small margins. And then you're trying to make up for those yeah. small niggly issues. And you're trying to make it up when the time already isn't there to be had. Yes. Um, I, if, you were, if you were able to drive at nine tenths, then we niggles wouldn't even be an issue at all. Yeah, you, you know, you because, even, then, because then you, you can go to ten tenths yeah. and get it back. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, you're at ten tenths most, if not all the time. So therefore any niggle is a, a big issue yeah. um so you know and, and that any little niggle anywhere in the in the food chain if you like mm-hmm. just put extra pressure everywhere else and then you know and, and the speeds you're going at there isn't the room in your head for the extra bits going on in the background whatever it is so yeah because yeah you always talk about you know the the you know having the plan you know and having yeah. the system and everyone from you're on that start line Nothing else matters. You just have to be focused out there and what's yeah. in front of you. And yeah. you, you can't afford to have those wee niggles or wee doubts starting to creep in. Yeah, exactly. I mean, just, for example, a handbrake. You know, I've had a couple of little handbrake things where it doesn't quite work how I feel, but each car may have a slightly different feel to it. Or, okay, we had a couple of actual problems with it, but then you're thinking you're coming down to a, a bit where there's a a potential handbrake and you, you're thinking slightly differently then you make a mess of the rest of it anyway. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I mean, the handbrake's not my favourite thing in the world anyway, but um, yeah, that, that was just an example. But yeah, yeah I mean, the, the Keridigian was good up until that point and, um, you know, whether whether that was a problem throughout the rest of the event, we still don't really know, but um, yeah, it's, um, that's the only time it's really cost us other than brain fade on my part <laughs> and the, to, you know, to be rallying on your home event like the Kerry Diggins reasonably close to home for you to have the cream of the European Championship there and to be go out there and set a fastest time and still not probably feeling 100% comfortable you have to take great comfort from that that you know like if, if never things you know if never the thing is you hit that sweet spot that you can go and race anybody yeah I mean 100% that's you know that probably came at the best possible time that fastest time because obviously Donegal and Ulster were probably one of the lowest moments I've had in a number of years really Um, and mentally to come back from that and to go and do such a big rally you know on roads I'd never driven on I'd never even well I'd done a couple of them um, on the previous year as judge of fact um, just for my own curiosity really Um, but to go there on roads I didn't know at such a low point I mean, I'm not going to kid anybody. I didn't want to be there Saturday. Saturday, I felt rubbish. You know, I was thinking, oh, I've, you know, when I get to the end of the last stage, I'm going to use this platform to say I'm not going to go. I'm, you know, that's me done type of thing. I was, I had all that planned, and it's, <laughs> you know, I just stuck with it, stuck to the plan as I would always do, um, and you know, started enjoying it again. And that's I've always said, if you're enjoying it, you 
you know, you're getting somewhere. Um, and then the weather changed and I've always liked the wet and the, the greasy, the horrible stuff. And that stage was horrendous, you know, for this, the shiny stuff, the first sort of two mile of it was really shiny and where Chris and then Mary and Spun and a few others went off. Um, so to get that fastest time for no real drama, you know, everything just worked. It was comfortable, no risks. Yes, we, knew we were going reasonably quick for the level of weather that was, but we were still only on a cut slip. We weren't on a wet tyre, and, you know, that was the first time I'd driven on that RE7 Plus C tyre, um, and it just worked. And, again, like you say, just proof that, you know, I can mix it with the best when things just feel right. Mm-hmm. Um, and up until probably earlier that day, they hadn't felt right for probably a number of, well, a number of rallies. Mm-hmm. And, the, you know, that taking the chance on that tyre, is that, you know, what you've said before, is be prepared to do something different from everybody else, not just looking around going, oh, everybody else is doing that, I'll do the same. Is it, that, you know, that you're saying, right, this tyre, I've heard great reports about it, this could, this could, this could make a difference here? Yeah, well, at that time, we didn't know. Um, I had no real benchmark to go off with that tyre, so... Part of I feel part of my involvement with Pirelli as a company is that I am prepared to go, or the reason I am involved in a way is that I'm prepared to go and do things a bit different because normally I trust myself, you know, to judge it and to, you know, to feel what the car has given me in return and, and drive accordingly. Um, and that, you know, that's, it was, it's probably almost a benefit to go out with no expectation because mm-hmm. I just break for the first corner as I would break with some sort of idea of what it should do. And it's like, okay, that was fine. And then you just build up the confidence corner by corner. And it was only probably a kilometre into the stage to where Chris's really slippy corner was. And we went around that with no real movement in the car. And it was like, yeah, okay. And you just keep going. And it just it just added up to a, a good time with no mistakes. Yeah. And do, do you feel that in the car? Do you know, did you come off that thing and right? If somebody's beeping this here, fair dues, because think like, that was as close to a perfect stage as I have driven all weekend. Oh, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Um, I felt there was there was definitely time in it, you know. Um, but I guess it, I'd just driven it as I'd seen it, which is all you can do. You, if you don't think there's there's more to be had, you you just drive. You, you're always generally driving to what you think the conditions will give you. So, you know, to, to have come out with the fastest time, I'd obviously judged it slightly better than everybody else on that occasion. Yeah. Uh, and obviously the, the, the driving and mental ability to go and do that, you know, in some stages, some places you go in really, really slow. But that's obviously what the conditions at that time dictated. You had to, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the, but the rest of the stage, I, I do remember having a couple of instances where I thought, well, oh, I've braked a little bit later than I probably should have done there. But then at the same time, you think, well, the tyre hasn't given up. It has reacted and responded and gripped more than I thought the surface probably would. Um, So from that on, you you kind of reach a new normal. You think, right, well, that's what it can do. So you have to keep trying to get to that limit time and time again because you've underestimated it effectively. Yes, the the, the, the level has gone creeped up that wee bit and you have yeah. to you have to push yourself to that limit now, yeah so. and that's that's the hard thing to do you know like even on sunday you know you, you're driving down those roads that were saturated like there was you could see the water billowing out the wheel arches you know coming up the side windows and you know you're clearing some water when you see that yeah. um because you normally have it only ever see stuff out the side windows when it's dusty on a gravel rally you know as the dust comes out the arches but it was yeah. water and it's like i did the fir- the whole of the first loop and even in that weather, we didn't break traction once. Right. No aquaplanes, no no nothing, no lockups. So again, you're thinking, Jesus, what will these tyres do? <laughs> it's just it's just incredible. And you know, I always had I had a setup in the car that I was really. It was actually the same setup as that fastest stage time in Keradigian. Yes, chassis wise. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, so yeah, it was. It's just. My, it boggles your mind. You, you, you've got to completely detach from what you think it'll do, because yeah. it'll do fifty percent more than that. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you, the road, the road conditions, and what your brain 
tells you should the car should do, mm-hmm. it just laughs in the face of all that and just. You know, this is this is just the, the latest incarnation. This is like this is not a completely new tire. This is just like a, a just slight a, change from the yeah, previous. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's nothing groundbreaking. That's just mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, that that's just kind of blows my mind that you know a, such like a, a small change can make such a huge difference, and you can feel that like as you said, you felt that within the first kilometer of in Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think spending a lot of time in a lot of different cars. You, I think my one of my strengths is how I sort of feed that feeds back to me. I've got certain things that I I do as a driver that feed back information to my brain on traction and dynamics and suspension and all the rest of it. And I think that's my strength and my asset is to be able to feel that from both seats. Right. So I'm always, even when I'm not driving, I'm still Chinden. thinking the same <laughs> yeah. way and trying to sense so that I can improve the car for the driver. Um, so I think I'm quite in tune with what it's doing. And it's nice when something isn't quite right and you go straight to it and you think that I think that's a bit of that or a bit of that and mechanical go, oh yeah, well, particularly I'm thinking more fault finding now than yeah. actual driving. But when you think there's something not quite right and you, you, you know, you, they find something wrong in that area that just reinforces yeah. that sensation. But you know, I talk to a lot of people, a lot of teams about sort of like a feedback circle that, that only works if the mechanics go and look and find a fault and report it back. Yes. Rather than going, Oh no, no, oh, we'll fix it, but we won't tell him. And we'll just tell him it was all fine. Yes. Because then the drivers think, well, what was it? It's now okay. I, yeah. Uh, did I just, everybody, or yes, everybody's, but everybody's got to be honest in the equation and say, Yes, it was Actually, our fault, yes. or yeah. uh, yes, it's my, you know the driver, it was my fault, or you know Donegal, Ulster, whatever. Mm-hmm. You've got to be prepared to take that, so that everybody has confidence to that that they are prepared to put up their hand then too. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Side then as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. because you know I'm not going to go nuts if somebody's made a mistake because I put it in the wall on the last rally, so I can't. <laughs> I can't complain. Um, but I think that's the thing that a lot of people overlook is. You know, from the, the top to the bottom of the team, you're only as good as that the weakest element of it and yeah. and their ability to own up to a mistake or report a problem or you know, there's no there's no shame in it. It's all builds trust because then when you know, when the driver does say there's a problem, they believe him because he's also said Yes, the and he's been the, the he's been the problem. And that's mm-hmm. you know, I think that's important. For sure, for sure. And then, you know, I suppose getting back to the Tarmac Championship, you know, you you, you come over here this year, and like we often talk about, you know, the camaraderie and the Irish rally and all, and like you've you've sampled that whenever you're here working with Pirelli. Whenever you're in the thick of the battle, is there still that, you know, is it different from the BRC? Is there a, a wee bit more fun and a bit more crack between the stages? Yeah, generally, yeah. I mean, the, the road sections work sometimes a little bit differently in that you, you can get to an arrival control, you check in on time, but then the stage isn't actually due to start for another 15 minutes which is a bit of a strange thing for me because normally the rival control is three minutes and then you go. Um, so, yeah, that, that does provide opportunity for for a bit of banter and a bit of... <laughs> a bit, well, yeah, the, the tone low is quite quickly sometimes. But, um, yeah, it, it's great. And, you know, we, we all get on really well. Okay, in the heat of battle, sometimes you, you, you don't necessarily... You're not that outgoing with other people, but, you know... and. It's, it's just part of it, isn't it? You know, everybody wants to win at the end of the day, but, you know, that, that shouldn't be at the cost of manners, really. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's been, there's one or two instances this year, but on the whole, there's, you know, it's, it's nothing that puts you off from wanting no, to because, uh, like, As you say, if never, you know, the, the motions is running high, sometimes you might say something, but it's probably forgotten about as quick as it's said, nearly too. Yeah, 100%, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and... Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's important to have that element of enjoyment, and it's it's a big commitment for for people coming over from 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 wherever they come to to come to the island of Ireland to go rallying. It's you know, especially with work and things, it's it's probably adds a couple of days at least onto every event for for those of us coming over. So I, there would be no point doing that if it wasn't enjoyable when you got there, or there was friction and yeah. stuff like that. So yeah, it's. Mm-hmm. And if there, you know, if there was other people thinking about you know coming over and doing the championship, obviously, would you encourage them then to come over? Because like, is it 
is it you know yes it's very competitive but is it fun as well yeah yeah of course it is yeah i mean you see some great parts of the, of the country and you know fantastic stages the stage mileage is good for the you know per mile it's yes it's a lot of money because the events are longer but you get better value for money because you're doing more stages whilst you're there um you know and that's that's one of the big things you know these cars aren't cheap to run but the more if you can look at the cost per mile and you know it's it, it is very good and you know they're not all the stages are you know they're well set up that you know they're, they're as dangerous as you want to make them but it's um it's uh that you know they're, they're iconic stages a lot of the time and that's that's what you want to go running for yeah and the, you know from, from a personal point of view too you know you've talked in the, over this past year you've grown up uh, an awful lot as a human being as well as really and do you feel that the the Irish sort of way of doing things has maybe helped that a wee bit that's kind of a bit more relaxed it's not as go 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 i don't know some of these th these events are go 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 once you get going it's, yeah <laughs> you know, there's, there isn't a lot of, of faffing you know hanging around and and stuff so you know uh, and i think the level of competition it is you know it's fairly intense it is intense because the the there's the desire to win. There's the desire to do well. There's wondering what everybody else has been doing that you have maybe not done or whatever. And you know, there's. I think doing it at the level I'm trying to do it at. Yes, it's fun, but the overriding thing is to do the job properly. Yes. Um, but you know, for 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 somebody not quite as. Not quite, not quite as I don't know what the word is. Motivate, not motivated. <laughs> well, not even that because everybody's driven to do something yeah. to a, yeah. to a level. But some people who just want to go out and enjoy the rally, enjoy the car, and, you know, with the, the friends, the, the mechanics that have come to help them out, and all the rest of it. You know, they're they're, they're amazing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And then you know, obviously, you know, this is the that's you know, twenty twenty four wrapped up. Um, is there anything in the pipeline yet for twenty twenty five, or is it just? Oh, Start again with a clean sheet of paper again. I think I just want to breathe for a couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I th we haven't had any formal discussions. I think there's there's discussion to be had. What what we're going to do? What we're going to change? You know, there's a few things we'd like to change, do differently, do better. Um, things we'd like to do again. Um, but as with a lot of my rallying over the years, it's been where are the opportunities rather than just what do I want to do? Because um, it's all, well, it is all sponsorship-based money and funds that we have to go out and find. And it's selling a product of, or marketing a product of advertising through rallying, through CNM, through myself, through Dave. We've got to sell that. And if that is sold on doing Irish Tarmac Championship, and we get the uptake to do that, that's where we go. If it ends up being British Championship, I'd go and do British again because it, it, there's no reason not to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if it's where somebody's market or somebody's business would like to go rallying, then that's what we do. So, you know, with this conversation to be had, you know, c and are, are very keen, they're still on board. But is do we do the same thing? Do we do it slightly differently? Um, and those are things we will no doubt discuss in the next couple of weeks really and then even but i suppose before we you know we, we finally wrap up then is you know you're involved now with harry huckley motorsport and this swift you know the the a, a kind of a stepping stone for young uh, people getting involved in the sport now as well yeah i mean i've i've noticed there's a, a big diff a big gap between the junior 1000 whether it be forestry or the tarmac championships over here to go from there to the next level, well, there isn't a next level. It's five levels up at Rally 4 car and like a JBRC or a Junior Irish Championship. And that's an eighty, ninety thousand pound car plus another 40 or 50 to run it for a year. Um, there's, okay, there's some modified stuff in the middle, but it's not really a progression in terms of... Um, other people competing around you that you've competed in against uh, against juniors. So, Hockley Motorsport have already done uh, a sort of like a Group N kit for a, a Swift. So to make it a little bit more like a Rally Four and its handling, 
we added a diff, a pedal box, hydraulic handbrake, and a few other things to make it feel a bit more like a a better car than it is in a way, uh, but without adding too much cost. Um, so we put a kit together that I think the kit's eleven nine nine five plus that, um, with quite a lot of specialist bits in it, a welding cage. So it's it's safe. It's probably overkilling safety and like underfloor protection. So God, it's all proper fabricated stuff, um, which is tried and tested. Um, and then really put a championship together that using contacts I've made over the years, the Speedline Pirelli. We've got an insurer on board to help like the 17 year olds and 18 year olds fund the, the road insurance bits and pieces like that so that it's like attractive in a in a commercial way as well as attractive in a sporting way so that the contacts that i've got are offering discount rather than offering something to you know strangle you by in yes. add, add in cost mm-hmm. but also you you know for example a prelly is the easiest one you know you put a prelly on the car you're not thinking that you're compromised on the tyre. Yeah. It's one of the best tyres you can put on a rally car. So therefore, you're safer. You're going to get better value for money out of the tyre. You're not risking your asset by putting poor quality tyres on and having an accident because of them. And just things like that, you know, proper brake pads, proper you know, fabricated equipment, proper safety equipment. The kit comes with a wraparound seat, a standard. You know, that's the minimum as far as I'm concerned. Mm-hmm. A proper six-point belt. So... It's no compromising safety, but it's also no compromising reliability. So it's protecting your asset. And I think for even for 23, 24, you can have it professionally built at Hockley's if you want, but it will do a build manual so that you can basically pick the kit up, bring a donor shell, take away a caged painted shell if you want to go that way and build it from home. Yeah. Um, and I think you know that was the way I built a lot of my cars myself. Uh, with help from my friends but at, at the same time it's it's it is on obviously a blatant rip off of the fiesta and the fiesta r2 fiesta st fiesta r2 mm-hmm. that did, which i was part of yes. in my sort of early working life if you like so mm-hmm. and that formula worked so yeah I so like think... uh, they come with the you know a donor car and yeah. they buy the, the kit at 11 995 yeah. They can take it away and build the car that would be every bit yeah. as equal to the one that comes rolling out yeah. of Oakley's or whoever, yeah? So. Yeah, because yeah, we, we, we've done a build book as every step of the way as to how to... I mean, it's not complicated, but it's just a, this is the best way to do it. And, mm-hmm. you know, there's there's help available. Um, you know, there'll be a parts run on events with with stuff available and, you know, standard parts as well as the, the, the competition bits. Uh, and we're just slowly trying to pull together resources and interested parties that are going to sort of support it with product at sensible prices and you know product support and just make it something worth doing that, that you're not trying to get ripped off every way you turn really and uh, will this but, will this be just like standalone events can they you know they go out and compete in or do you envisage like a championship for these guys to compete in yeah I've, I've submitted a proposal for a seven round championship to msuk that they see no issue with it's not been actually finalized yet because we haven't got some of the dates but um Mm -hmm. yeah that's that's definitely the plan so that'll be supported we'll do an open day hopefully november and i'm going to do some test days you know free to free to attend test days um with tuition and some online stuff like we're doing now but go through some in-car like i do for work as well so you know there'll be incentives to help develop the people that are involved as well not you know not you know off off the stages so um i'd love to do an irish version as well um, gravel and tarmac as well uh, so keep your eyes peeled for that yeah because like as you say like from the junior 1000 it's a it's a massive step up to yeah. that next level and even th- this will be an intermediate step as well too as you say a lot yeah. of the, the kit that's on this car will be on your rally four car you know whenever you can gather up the funds and it's not a major drain on your funds then either because it's an affordable step yeah exactly and I, I think we're, we're supplying six gravel tyres with the kit and i would say that would do most of the gravel rallies in a year so you know and i think the, the kit and the car built is still less than a lot of the junior cars are they're for sale at and and they're you know they're for sale at 25 30 grand or more mm-hmm. and there is nothing really on them at all from a performance it's a set of dampers and that's your lot really so you know the donor cars the swift donor cars are 
I've had three donor cars for two and a half grand. Yeah, they're not making silly money. Like it's no, not, like, no, you can buy micros now. We started to make silly money even yeah. for a donor car. Like, so yeah, it's what's still affordable. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you know, the, it, you can buy a bit of a nicer one, and you probably not have to spend bits on. Like we're finding a lot of the brake calipers are, are not very nice on the rear, so we're putting a new set of rear calipers on at one hundred and twenty quid. Mm-hmm. I mean, why wouldn't you to start yeah. a season with? If you do a year with them and bin them, it's uh, you're, uh, it's you're not lost nothing. Are you? <laughs> No, so it's just stuff like that. I think this donor, the last donor car we, or the first one we've built now, I think I've spent pounds on replacing standard, but used, you know, like a, I think, but a new radiator on it, new front wheel bearings, front arms, track rod ends, rear, rear um, calipers, and I think one of the uh, front subframe because they, they tend to rot a little bit. Yeah, but like, you're buying a car that is probably now at the stage 10, 12 year old, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so mm-hmm. it's, but I, I, I don't, I don't think for much, for less money you'd go, you'd have more fun. No, and you know if you need you need a wing, you know you damage your wing, girl, you go to your local scrapyard or whatever. You know it's it's not the twenty quid sport to buy a, yeah. a twenty quid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the same. It's the same principle as the junior cars. Really, there's a yeah. lot of standard stuff on it. The <laughs> uprated stuff is there for safety and reliability more than yeah. outright speed yeah, but the handling yeah. characteristics with a diff and a pedal box yeah. are what you're going to get used to driving bigger cars so that's you know that's the yeah. that's the philosophy that's the idea um and just get get so to, basically we don't lose you know juniors with potential because they haven't got 80 grand to go it into a rally <laughs> Yeah, and then you know, if somebody's interested, you know, how do they get involved, or who do they contact? Or uh, I'm obviously easy to get hold of on Facebook and Instagram at Emmy Rally Sport. Um, otherwise, you can contact Hockey Motorsport as well. Uh, all the details of the kit and the contact information and the press release about what we're trying to do is all on the Hockey Motorsport um, page. So that's the easiest way to to go and have a look. And we're hoping to have the regs published in the next three to four weeks, so that you know before November. Um, the the regs will be out and everything, and I think the first event. I can't actually technically tell you the first yeah. event, but it's a gravel rally in Mid Wales, <laughs> in the middle of April. Yeah. So it gives people a good <laughs> chunk of time to. Yeah, there's plenty um, of time there to get uh, to, to to get the wheels yeah. in motion. Yeah, they're all pace note events as well, which I think is important. Yeah, uh, they're so not just right. helps, uh, helps not single as well too. Yeah, they're not single venue rallies. Not that there's anything wrong with them, but they've no. done right. The idea is that they've been done at junior level, so yeah. it's a case of stepping up, and it's uh, yeah, quite excited about it. I just hope it you know takes off, and you know it's we put put a lot of work into it and a lot of effort and a lot of uh, you know not a huge amount of money, but it's it's all you know I'm funding it, so you know it's um, it'd be nice to to see it see it succeed. So thanks very much there to Frank and Lauren and as Matt as well too. Uh, you know that the, the Suzuki. You know, I think that's just it, it, that's the great potential there. I really do think it has, because you know that's a huge step up from the Junior One Thousand up to a Rally Fork here. It is. You know, there is a big step, as you say, to go from one to the other, and this gives you that opportunity of something in between. You know, you have a bit more speed and a bit more power to play around with, as well as learning the handle. And from the price perspective, like you yeah. know, it really is entry level stuff. That's for sure. And, you know, like the Suzuki Swift is out there, the donor cars are out there. You know, they're not crazy money either, you know, too. So, yeah, I, yeah, I think we'll definitely have to watch that space on that, on that one there now, definitely. And then Claire Forestry this weekend, Peter Solberg coming to play. And, you know, a, you know, a great lineup for the event itself as well. You know, there's a good range there, four-wheel drive and two-wheel drive being there coming in as well. That's it. Look, you know, usual fantastic forestry entry. Um, uh, and, and again, some of the MI Academy guys are taking part in it as well. Good to always follow them and their, their adventures. But, you know, you mentioned PETA and everybody just thinks back to, you know, the, the Holly, Mr. Hollywood himself yeah. being, you know, in Sligo at Rally Ireland. And and just, you know, he, he's such an entertainer and he really is a big draw. And I do hope to get the, you know, the spectators down just even to, to come out and witness this you know it's something a bit different something a bit interesting yeah and like going by Peter's uh, own like you know social media feed over the last day or so he's really excited about coming back to Ireland as well too you know so you know it's great to see somebody that has been there and done that still gets excited about coming over here 
Yeah. And, you know, we're going to see him in something completely different. Like, yeah. you know, I've been trying to think and I don't recall Peta ever expressing any interest in the Paris Dakar or any of those sort of events. So to see him in a four wheel drive Land Rover is going to be something, you know, very unique. Yeah, because so like you know, when we heard all about this, you know, we spoke to obviously Jerry and Dennis last week, and Dennis was then was able to put us in contact with one of the, the people, Dave Marsh from Bowler, and uh, Dave is like the head of motorsport in Bowler, and we thought we'd find out a wee bit more about you know what Bowler was and you know what what was the rationale about coming to Clare. So let's hear from Dave. So I'm joined now by Dave Marsh, head of motorsport for Bowler Motorsport. Uh, Dave, you're very welcome along and. What a, a initiative this whole bowler uh, challenge is, because they get, uh, you're travelling the world with it. Yeah, we're we're very fortunate. It's been a it's been a long journey in terms of setting it up, but one that which now provides some really interesting opportunities for all our clients over a, basically over a three year program, as it were. Yeah, and like this starts out, you know, uh, the, the the grassroots and goes up to uh, to traveling the world, basically. Then, yeah. So, the, so the concept really is that um, we with the Defender uh, Rally car that Bowler's developed in, in conjunction with the, with the base car from JLR, is that we can take a, uh, an enthusiast or a client right the way from having no uh, motorsport knowledge whatsoever right through to be able to compete at the very sort of highest levels in in cross-country motorsport but also um because of the nature of um motorsport in the uk we've adopted using rallies as a means to provide the skill set in terms of navigation rally timing tulip books all those sorts of things because traditionally in the uk cross month country motorsport isn't based on that so the rallying provides the other side of the coin to start to hone their navigation skills and get into the, all the full timing disciplines and everything before they move on to bigger events so the year one guys we have a seven round series which is based in the uk we've now extended that into coming and visiting you guys for claire rally which we're really looking forward to this year so that's a seven round series to start with where they have a mix of cross country both hill rally comp safari and and gravel rallies and then year two takes that another step forward further with the european series which is one which takes in the longer distances so we start to build the pace element to this so obviously as you're well aware you know a lot of the rallies in in the uk and ireland are sort of 50 to 60 miles um then they move into stages which are longer than that in one stage so we go to we go to france as our first step in the water with the french two terrain event which is a great atmosphere and, and the french really embrace cross-country motorsport then we go on to this year we've done Lorca uh in spain where that's a a 400 kilometer baja in one day so just two stages so <laughs> So you've really got to be sort of, and you can start to see the necessity to understand your pace then. Yes. Uh, we've just come back from uh, Iceland in August. We took 11 cars there. That was 550k of stages in over three days. And then uh, we just, again, we stepped it up again to a little trip to Morocco we've just got back from. But it's that, it's that whole pathway where people can do this with one car. And yes. the you know the defender does it right from the from the get go, and you can take it right through to full long distance events with with the same vehicle. It's got huge amount of capability. Granted, you know it's never going to be a an ultra lightweight rally car, but it's one where people can get a huge amount of uh, development opportunity, but can do so many different disciplines. Yeah, because like this is this is not just for you know a, a young guy that's just out you know wants a bit of a slide about. This is guys who's out looking for adventures. This is you know this is taking really into the extreme almost. Yeah, I mean, I I call the car an experience delivery mechanism, uh, and you, you know that's what it is. We we pride ourselves in the camaraderie in the team. You know, this this we provide hospitality, um, but they're also surrounded by guys that have done an awful lot of uh, motorsport events. So people are helped along their way, and can they can sort of find the level that they're happy with. So if we've got guys that are happy doing the UK series, and that fits what they do, and then you've got others that just go right, give me the next challenge. Where, where can we go next? And and it's exciting to be able to provide people with that opportunity, but also see them develop along the way. Yeah, because it is the, the spirit of adventure. You're helping to create memories, create dreams, I suppose. 
yeah and and you know it's very much like that at every level you can see the um when we've taken first of all you know just the initial experiences of what the car can do in off-road conditions is has stunned many people and you know we've tested with some really high profile drivers and i've i've never had anybody get out of the car and be disappointed they're <laughs> really surprised by its capability um but then when we take it to the longer events and like we've just done in morocco the opportunity to go to somewhere on the planet that you would just never get to see under normal conditions um, is something really special to do. Yeah, and this obviously then as part of the, you know the bowler kind of family, this is they see this as been been beneficial to help them sell vehicles. You know, look at what we can do. We can you know this is all terrain. This can go and conquer the world with one of our one of our jeeps. Yeah, so so you know that the, we're we're owned by JLR. And yeah. it, it's it's um, what we've done is done as little as possible to the base car as a factory production item um, in order to make it competitive. So the sort of bowlers spro engineers have sprinkled their magic dust on it in terms of performance in, from a handling perspective and protection. Um, but the base car has been phenomenally good um, as it stands. So we've been able to use both those elements to demonstrate how good the car is and, and sure you know it's it's great to be able to publicize what a great vehicle jlr have produced but one that um let's say opens so many doors to different different motorsport disciplines and uh, that you know there's there's few vehicles on this planet where you can go from from a gravel rally in western ireland to the sahara and actually be competitive in both <laughs> elements so you know in that point it's it's almost it's usp as well yeah and the, the, the you know as you say they are they are recognizable as the you know the the, the carrier the, you know the vehicle you can go in and buy off the showroom you know we see the the you know rally one cars now with the the big wings and you know the wide bodies the, the, you know yours are as as a, as you could buy it off the showroom yeah and and genuinely the vehicle can be serviced by your main dealer there <laughs> is there so there's no change to the engine map uh, there's no change to the gearbox programming map and, and none of it whatsoever. We we have our own damper settings. It runs its own. We run um, Fox uh, internal bypass um, uh, shock absorbers. We're own, you know, we take all the air suspension off and all that. And we have our own mode that we run in that takes all the stability control and, and, and um, ABS off. We turn all that off to go racing because it's um, otherwise it doesn't want to stop. But <laughs> uh, But other than that, you can switch it back to the road mode and for all intensive purposes it's the factory car yeah. so it's uh it really is as close to standard as you could probably get and go racing yeah and the thing is you know every car is equal you know it's uh, you know it's uh, it's the guys bit and the car that makes the difference then you know there's nobody spending an extra 10 grand they have a fancier gearbox or the latest upgrade in the engine every every vehicle is exactly the same that's exactly right and that's one of the the things we put an awful lot of emphasis on with the with the championship regulations there's the only things you can alter on that car are the tire pressures you can fit more lights and you can change your damper settings everything else is fixed um and it stops it becoming a nuclear arms race in yes. terms of spending um that means they get huge value for money but also it's like you say it's really competitive racing we get we've had events where they've been two seconds apart first and second and and that's that's what people want isn't it yeah. you know if you've been if you've been beaten you've been outdriven not yes. been you haven't you haven't been outspent mm -hmm. and that's i think that's one of the other key attractions with this championship yeah because you know right from like you know junior 1000 right up to the the elite in the world it's competition they want to be racing each, each other in equal cars nobody enjoys going and winning by a rally by 10 minutes or that kind of thing they want the, the competition they want you know parrot they they want that level of everybody in the same you know at the same level exactly exactly that and and i think the other benefit with it is the level of support that we can provide to the customers you know we we, we we're not bringing all sorts of odd bob bits and pieces for people you know we've got a very robust spare support within the team that comes as part of the package in the year one so they you know they only buy their have to buy their spares if they use them you haven't got to go and buy a huge amount of spares up front for the car so that keeps the cars easy to maintain and we can support as many as possible in each event
Yeah, and Dennis talked last week, you know, you travel as a family, you know, everybody is included, you know, it's all serviced out of, you know, the one area, uh, you know, you, uh, you just go and stay in the same accommodation, all this kind of thing, it's all part of the, it's, you, wherever you just go, you just, you just go as one. Yeah, and my, um, my, my previous life of this has been in the fire service, so running big teams of people and operating really close together, cheap by jowl, has been fundamental to having a strong team that can deliver. And that was one of the real strong things I wanted to try and set out to with this process is that, you know, the driver, it isn't just the driver that gets the car to the finish, it's the whole team. Yeah. And we we rotate our techs within the team as well so we don't have there's there's not team favorites everybody gets an opportunity to work with each other um but that camaraderie i think is really special and one that's evolved over the period of the three years we've been running the championship yeah because even that the last round of the uk uh dennis was lying sick and he got stuck i think it was somebody stopped and pulled him out and you know maturity got to the finish not not very often that would happen though no, and we've had that on a number of occasions. Um, Forest Estate at the final round of the series is notorious for um, being quite arduous. And uh, one, of our, one of our customers, he managed to roll it. Uh, he, he got through the flying finish. He got a time and then decided to put it on its roof. <laughs> Uh, but in order to get him back out, we had another customer that had a bit a bit more problem. He lent him the entire front end of his car overnight. I ra rang them up and said, look, we need some parts. So we literally stripped the front end of his car and put it onto his. And that's the sort of level of sportsmanship and engagement and, and support for each other, you know, really. Yes. And that just speaks volumes for, you know, the, 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 all the competitors in that whole team, they, you know, that they are preferred not to leave a man behind, as well, the, the old saying goes. Yeah, exactly. And, and and that goes for the service crew as well. You know, we've we've had them work right through the, you know, they've they worked through the night and I've had to send guys to bed. They go, we want to stay up and out. We said, no, I need I need some of you to be fit to work in the morning, please. <laughs> so that whole desire to 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 make it succeed is it runs right through from the drivers right through to the technicians. Yeah. And then, you know, you're coming to Ireland now this weekend to the Clare stages, like a brand new event here as well that hasn't run in 40 something years. What what was the, the attraction of coming here? Um, we really, I, I, I like to keep the championship as fresh as possible. We've enjoyed huge hospitality from all, all sorts of the rallies. Uh, track Rod that's just been on this weekend, for example, and we've done Nicky Grist. But it's nice to be able to give people different options within a championship it isn't like like a, a race circuit where you go right i'm going to go to silverstone every every july or something like that mm -hmm. um and I, I started looking at what was what was available in ireland um jerry o'brien's been in front fantastic in terms of supporting that and so uh, motorsport ireland um but it's one of course we've got the benefit of um bilateral uh, sharing of licenses as well so we don't have to have all the issues around the licenses so i thought it's a really exciting opportunity to, to to come to somewhere new and of course dennis um you know we've got to look after our irish contingent as well we've got a number of um uh, irish navigators in, in it as well so you know it's 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 just a nice way to add another dimension to a uk championship um and support everybody that's, that's in it yeah and not only coming to ireland and you know the fantastic event that jerry and his team's going to put on peter Solberg's coming over like a, a two you know a a, a, a multi uh wrc champion like a wrc wrx like this is massive like i don't know what it means to bowler but what it means to irish rally and it's huge well, obviously, you know, we, we, we're thrilled to bits. We, we're really fortunate to have the, the strong support of Castrol. And obviously, you know, Petra is an ambassador for, for Castrol. It's been muted for quite a while. And one of the key things has been trying to get dates to align to enable them to be able to do an event. And we're thrilled to bits that we'll be, we'll be coming to, to rally Claire with him. Um, I think... <laughs> biggest job is to convince him that this isn't a, a, a rally you've got to drive it slightly different <laughs> and uh they say you know they're quite heavy cars you've got to respect that uh which i'm sure he'll, he'll deal with um you know more than amply but um yeah absolutely thrilled to bits that castrol and, and petter are, are coming to join us at this event uh, and it's great to hopefully shine a bit more light and and focus on uh, on our irish gravel rallying as well yeah, because like not only like as Peter like renowned you know in the world of motorsport, he's way beyond that. Like you know, he's not called Mister Hollywood for nothing. His personality is just you know, it's just makes him so 
amenable, so accessible to the wider community as well. Yeah, and, and you know, I'm, I'm sure the entire you know bowler and defender rally team are looking forward to to meeting him and supporting him. We've got our own, um, as I said, we've got our own hospitality, and hopefully he's going to be able to share that with us and see what this um this whole defender rally series is is all about and what it offers and i think what a unique proposition it is yeah and this will obviously you know open up avenues to you know for use as a business as well to for other people to see that might not be always aware of what's going on there as well yeah it's uh, you know quite often it's it's hard to show uh into mainstream what what this type of sport is so undoubtedly he's going to be able to bring an awful lot to the table for that both you know for us and yourselves and and the wider sort of rallying community for sure because like you know sometimes in ireland the gravel rallying has always been seen as like the the poor cousin this is going to like have eyeballs on it that wouldn't normally be there and you know i know how competitive gravel rallying is so to bring this and let other people see how good it is it's only a one one for everybody Absolutely. And, and, you know, we've been lucky enough. We had Mark Higgins with us a couple of years ago. He had a great time in the car uh, and he still comes back and join us, joins us occasionally for testing. And, and he's acted as a mentor for some of our some of our competitors as well. So, you know, having someone that's up at, up another level again with uh, like with the likes of Petter just to just to come and experience it will be, you know, it's a huge privilege for that, for us. And we're, we're thrilled to be having him with us. So thanks very much, Sir, to Dave. An absolute pleasure. And it's going to be very interesting to see how the, the bowlers get on now at the weekend. And best luck to all competing in Clare now this weekend too. Just fingers crossed that the weather's kind to you there. And, the, you know, the stage is looking absolutely tip-top condition. So I think it's going to be a, a fantastic rally. So that was uh, Season 3, Episode 42. So until the next time, take care, speak soon, and bye. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>